Hello and welcome to the new series of Drishti IAS. I am Pooja Devedi and in this segment today we are going to discuss about rising inequality. This topic is important from the perspective of prelims and also from the perspective of GS mains paper. So let's begin with the very first topic which is why is it in the news. Now the news says that world's richest 1% who are gaining the fastest wealth are in 10 nations. Which report is this? This is the Credit Suisse. Global Wealth Report of 2021. What is Credit Suisse? It's a financial service company based in Switzerland. And the Credit Suisse Global Wealth Report provides the most comprehensive and up-to-date coverage of information on household wealth worldwide. According to this graph, which shows the countries of Brazil, China, India, Italy, UK and US, a trend has been observed from the year 2000 to 2020. And as you can see, in Brazil, it was an upward Trend, then a downward trend and then again upward. Something like very different from Brazil happened in China. An upward trend, then downward and again upward. And India saw an upward trend in the early 2000s and then again a downward and again upward. You can see the graph of US. It is seeing an upward trend since the early 2000s and so on. So if we talk about the highlights of this report of 2021, the share of wealth held by the richest 1% in nations, including the US, China, Brazil and India, jumped in the fallout from the pandemic, fueled by efforts to curb the effects of the virus. And Brazil's rich boosted their share by 2.7% last year to make up almost 50% of nation's wealth. There is an inequality. And the richest 1% in 8 of the 10 nations boosted their share of wealth last year primarily due to interest rate cuts from the COVID-19 outbreak. The report highlighted the rapid gains in fortunes across the world. The world's 500 richest people added $1.8 trillion to their combined net worth last year according to Bloomberg Billionaires Index but also increasing disparities. Of course, if a smaller proportion of the world's population is going to sideline the chunk of the wealth, there is going to be a glaring disparity. And if we talk about the post from Bangkok, it's worrying for India because India is a growing country and as a growing country, it does not want, any country doesn't want the neighbor to be very powerful. So China will create millionaires over three times faster than US in five years and, and this highlight is also given in this particular report. Let's look at the Lawrence curve. Now the distribution of income in an economy is represented by Lawrence curve and the degree of income inequality is measured by the Gini coefficient. Okay, so what I want to say here is how much the income is distributed in the economy is given by Lorentz curve and in that distributed income, what is the degree of inequality is given by Gini coefficient. Now, one of the five major and common macroeconomic goals of a government is the equitable and fair distribution of wealth. The Lorentz curve, the actual distribution of income curve, is a graphical distribution of wealth developed by Max Lorenzen in the year 1906. It shows the proportion of income earned by any given population, given percentage of population. You see this 45 degree line which shows perfect equality of income. And the actual distribution of income is shown by this particular curve. And the gap between it is known as the inequality gap. So one thing that you have to keep in mind is the further the line away is from the perfect equality line, the greater will be the inequality. Alright? And then comes the Gini coefficient which is derived from the Lorentz curve. It can be used as an indicator of economic development in a country. The Gini coefficient, it measures the degree of income equality in a population and it can vary from 0 that is perfect equality to 1 to perfect inequality. A Gini coefficient of 0 means that everyone has the same income while a coefficient of 1 represents a single individual receiving all the income. So, first we have to understand that the current world economic order can be termed neo-capitalism or neo-liberalism 
which focuses on laissez faire that is market freedom globalization intellectual property rights free movement of goods services investment and ideas there are certain impacts of inequality around the globe so first we need to understand that according to a recent oxfam report inequality in india has risen to levels last seen when it was colonized the additional wealth acquired by india's 100 billionaires since march when the lockdown was imposed in 2020 is enough to give every one of the 138 million poorest rupees 94045 and an unskilled worker in india would take 3 years to earn the richest person earned in one second last year so you can imagine the first impact is normalization of inequality many major economists worldwide they try to justify growing inequalities as an inevitable by product of economic growth that led to the reduction of absolute poverty moreover concerns about inequality could also be easily dismissed as being informed by socialism which is portrayed as a threat to democracy now due to this the distribution of new wealth between capital and labor has become so one sided that workers are constantly being pushed to penury while the rich are getting richer further the worsening inequality in income and opportunities impacts some sections disproportionately due to discrimination based on gender cost and other factors second is creation of monopolies despite its alleged commitment to market competition the neo liberal economic agenda instead pot the decline of competition and the rise of a close to monopoly power in vast stretches of the economy such as pharmaceuticals telecom airlines agriculture banking and industrial retail there is also the impact on unsustainable economic growth which is one of the chief characteristics of economic development is the intensification of energy use there is unprecedented concentration of high energy density in all economic development strategies and the bulk of energy continues to be generated from non renewable sources the developed world's primary objective is to capture energy generated resources from across continents and put them to use to push their gdp growth to greater heights and the unsustainable economic growth model is of course against the concept of sustainability as it sacrifices the needs of the future generation for the welfare of the present generation first challenge if we talk about from indian perspective is distinguishing poor and non poor in developing countries such as india despite having hundreds of poor pro poor schemes the biggest question is whether such benefit is actually reaching the poor the real challenge is to distinguish the poor from non poor there is also low government spending the government spending on health education and social protection in the country is very low and more often than not subsidizes the private sector impacts on women the burden of inequality of course continues to be borne by indian women especially in the covid era they continue to be tasked with the bearing the burden of the care work there is impact of vulnerable as well while traditionally vulnerable communities such as the scs and the sts are catching up with the rest of the society in primary education they are failing or falling further behind when it comes to advanced education most now have access to mobiles but few have computers and too many people are still just one illness away from poverty as according to undp's 2019 hdr climate change will of course only aggravate the situation of inequality what is the way forward given the damage inflicted by covid-19 on the global economy it seems remarkable that household wealth has emerged relatively unscathed wealth acts as a form of self insurance that households can draw upon when the times are hard that means your savings can save you rising economic inequality has become an important issue for overall development of india with the focus has shifted to inclusive growth in the past years by increasing social spending changing gendered attitudes towards care work and ensuring wealthy pay their share the government can reduce inequality and a focus on the rights based entitlement for example manrega and technological innovation such as opening bank accounts and facilitate digital payment to beneficiaries the jam trinity which is jandhan aadhar and mobile trinity 
they have gone some way in improving lives of the poor and the vulnerable like new insurance schemes for universal health coverage ayushman bharat crop failure and incidents such as pradhan mantri fasal bima yojana they reflect a momentum for action to tackle inequality all right so let's move on to our question the worsening inequality in income and opportunities impacts some sections disproportionately due to discrimination based on gender caste and other factors you have to discuss it in 250 words so that's it for today tomorrow we shall meet again with another segment until then stay updated and thank you so much for watching